Hello, welcome to ICD Talks. I'm Anastasia Lavrina, and today we have a special guest, Dr. Faris Ismail Zadeh, Director of Institute for Development and Diplomacy and Vice Rector of Ada University. Hello and welcome to our program. Good morning. Thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you so much. So, third anniversary of 44 days, Second Karabakh War, 27th of September. How would you characterize the relationship between Baku and Yerevan three years after the start of the Second Karabakh War? Yeah, indeed, a very important milestone. We are celebrating the uh, third anniversary of the beginning of Second Karabakh War. Uh, it's a very important milestone for Azerbaijan because uh, we were able to successfully liberate our lands and return, uh, start the return of our refugees and IDPs into their homelands. Um, well, three years have passed already. Unfortunately, uh, the peace process is at the deadlock. We were not able to sign peace peace agreement with Armenia. And uh, there has been some confrontation and hostilities on the ground. And uh, this has led to Azerbaijan taking anti-terrorist measures and uh, fighting illegal Armenian formations on the ground. Uh, I believe that now, or now that Azerbaijan has established sovereignty over Karabakh, maybe from now on the peace deal will be possible to conclude and uh, both Armenia and Azerbaijan will normalize their relationships. So from your answer, I can understand that after the recent anti-terrorist measures in the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan, all the issues have been resolved and there is no any more obstacles for achieving the peace agreement between Armenia and Azerbaijan? Well, there are some serious uh, problems uh, and obstacles being removed now. Uh, Armenian military formations are leaving the Karabakh area. Azerbaijan has demanded that uh, illegal uh, parliament and illegal uh, so-called state bodies in Karabakh uh, has needs to be dismantled. And Azerbaijani sovereignty, Azerbaijani constitution needs to be uh, implemented. Uh, of course, there are still barriers. I mean, Armenian diaspora is a big barrier, is a big obstacle. They are continuously advocating for hatred and for, uh, you know, animosity, for hostility with neighbors. Uh, Armenian diaspora does not want to give up on territorial claims towards Azerbaijan, towards Turkey. Uh, so mm, some radical parties, some political uh, parties in Yerevan are now uh, protesting and they are trying to overthrow Pashinyan. They are trying to create obstacles towards peace. So all of these, uh, you know, political forces in both in diaspora as well as in Yerevan are against normalization of the relationships. So I would uh, I would say that if we can neutralize somehow these forces, then we can uh, we can achieve peace in the region. The, the reintegration process of uh, ethnic Armenians living in the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan into multinational. Uh, Azerbaijani society, what are the key obstacles for a quick and successful reintegration process? Yes, Azerbaijan is uh, aiming uh, towards uh, reintegration of Karabakh Armenians. Uh, we have already sent uh, first uh, trucks of humanitarian aid, food, medicines. Um, medical personnel is working there to help, uh, especially unfortunate incident in the uh, petrol station. And the Azerbaijani government is sending medical aid and explosion uh, victims are being, um, you know, treated. So uh, Azerbaijan is uh, definitely aiming at the peace agenda. Uh, those Armenians that want to stay, they will be protected. They will be uh, safely living within Azerbaijani sovereignty. Uh, those Armenians that don't want to stay, especially the young men who were fighting in the past and they were part of illegal military formations, they can leave. That's that's fine. Uh, it's their choice. But Azerbaijan is aiming towards peaceful reintegration of Karabakh Armenians and uh, restoration of peace and the stability in the region. So the reintegration process has started and uh, in my understanding, there is no more issues uh, left I mean, the disagreements between Armenia and Azerbaijan. So um, from your point of view, how this process will affect the future negotiations between uh, between Baku and Yerevan? For example, in the nearest time, there will be a meeting held between the head of Azerbaijan state and prime minister of Armenia in Spain. Uh, what are your expectations? 
Well, uh, Karabakh uh, was one of the obstacles uh, towards peace between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And now that the Karabakh issue is closed, Azerbaijan has restored its sovereignty and Azerbaijan has able to uh, uh, eliminate uh, Armenian military formations from its ground. Now I believe that uh, peace is possible. Uh, both Azerbaijan and Armenia should recognize each, each other's uh, territorial integrity, should recognize internationally recognized borders, uh, should uh, give up uh, territorial claims on each other. And I think that the peace agreement is possible. Also, I think that peace uh, and uh, normalization between Armenia and Turkey is possible because, uh, you know, Turkey-Armenian normalization is very much dependent on Azerbaijan-Armenian normalization. So I believe that uh, once we restore order and stability in Karabakh, both countries can peacefully coexist with each other. So you said about Turkey, President of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan visited Nakhchivan and together with the President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, two leaders cite several documents having significant importance for the region of the South Caucasus and not only. Uh, in your opinion, how this partnership of two uh, brotherly states will affect the geopolitical situation in the region? Well, Turkey is a, a security guarantor for Azerbaijan. We have signed Shusha Declaration, and uh, this declaration says that both Azerbaijan and Turkey uh, support each other. They will, you know, help each other in 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 case of attack or or military intervention from third parties. So they are strong allies, and they also strong economic partners. So Turkey and Azerbaijan are effectively building. Uh, successfully so-called middle corridor, transportation corridor, energy corridor. We are uh, helping each other to uh, develop the region. Uh, I mean, many countries like Georgia and uh, Balkan countries are benefiting from this uh, energy and transport cooperation. So uh, I believe that the uh, visit of Erdogan to Nakhchivan will deepen our relationships, will bring Nakhchivan out of blockade and uh, will help it to integrate into regional economy, regional energy infrastructure, re regional transportation infrastructure. So generally, I believe that uh, this is a successful visit and Azerbaijan and Turkey will continue uh, building a strong integration, strong partnership for the peaceful uh, future of the region. By the way, President of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, proposed a new format of negotiations between Turkey, Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia. How valuable is it now? I believe this is a successful uh, proposal uh, because uh, in many ways, Russia and Turkey are uh, strong uh, players in the region. They are security guarantors of the region. So involving Russia and Turkey in peace process will, uh, I think, speed up the negotiations. Uh, we also know about the format of 3 plus 3, where Iran is participating. So it's important to involve regional uh, powerhouses, regional uh, powerful countries into the peace agenda and to make sure that there's a strong partnership, not only on Karabakh issue, but on transportation issues, on regional integration, economy, uh, lifting the barriers to trade, uh, creating energy hubs. Uh, so uh, I think Russia is now looking more towards South, uh, towards Turkey, towards Iran, for uh, transport corridors, for energy corridors, for uh, investments, for tourism. So this kind of cooperation will be beneficial for the region. And should we expect any reaction from the West on in, to this new format of negotiations? Well, of course, there's a geopolitical competition in the region. Uh, West is trying to dominate the region as well, considering the geostrategic importance of South Caucasus. We have seen American military exercises in Armenia. We have seen French, uh, you know, policemen in Armenian Azerbaijani border. We have seen more and more involvement of the West into the region uh, in terms of uh, negotiations, in terms of military assistance. Uh, we also see that, you know, some other countries like India are entering the arm race and geopolitical competition. So uh, generally there is a, there's this uh, feeling of zero sum game. West believes that, you know, they need to take a region away from Russian influence. Uh, there are Russian peacekeepers on the uh, ground and Russia is uh, a military actor on the ground. So West is trying to get rid of this. Uh, and obviously, uh, what's happening in Armenia now, uh, you know, there's a political fight 
uh, opposition is trying to overthrow Pashinyan. Pashinyan is regarded as a uh, politician who is promoting Western interests in the country against Russian interests. Uh, there are some discussions about Pashinyan trying to leave Collective Security Treaty Organization. Uh, there was a statement from Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs yesterday about that, uh, about pro-Western policies of Pashinyan. So there's a geopolitical competition, and, and I think that this will uh, somehow hurt Armenia in the long run. Uh, I think Armenia should better focus on uh, peaceful relationships with its neighbors uh, uh, instead of looking for new uh, allies in, the, in, in, in foreign countries. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining Adi Talks today. Thank you. Thank you very much.